Today is the day that we do our massive flower harvest for the week. The flowers take a very long time to handle. It takes me about a half day to harvest and a half day to arrange them into bouquets for the market. We also find that the flowers keep the best if we pick them, set them into water, and then put them to rest for about a half a day in our air conditioned room. By doing that, it makes it so they get the best possible stem life. So before I think about any sort of arranging, I have to come out here and I have to pick everything. Explain to the world what you're doing, Ian. Well, I'm cleaning out the buckets because Serena has very demanding opinions on how clean the buckets should be. The first step to harvesting flowers is to have clean buckets to harvest your flowers into. So ideally, this shouldn't happen on flower harvesting day, but today it's happening on flower harvesting day. We're cleaning buckets before we get going to picking. We actually use buckets that used to be kitty litter buckets, but they're the perfect shape because they're tall and skinny, so they hold, when you pick the flowers, they hold them straight. If, when you harvest your flowers, if you kind of have them on an angle, some of them will tend to grow straight back up, and then, you know, when you go to make a bouquet with it, it's a crooked stem. So, it's something you have to be aware of. I also make sure to go through, this is where we keep all of our flowers, so I want to clear out any flowers that I potentially still have, because I don't want them to get mixed up. I want everything that I'm harvesting today to be fresh flowers. I don't want to get confused with any two day old flowers. I also am very bad and I leave all my empty buckets all over the place full of scummy water. So I have to bring these out. I have to get these to Ian so he can wash them up for me. This is where the leftover flowers go to die. My, this is my bucket emptying spot. It's been a few days since I've done any sort of harvesting out here, so there is a lot of flowers. The garden is just filled to the brim, and I need to come out here, and I need to strip them out. Any flower farm that is this full of flowers is doing it wrong. You need to be cutting the flowers so that you can sell them. So that is what I'm going to be getting to right now. The tools that I use for harvesting cut flowers Super, super simple. I'll throw a link down below for some of these things. Um, buckets, you, you don't even have to pay for them. Just find whatever buckets you can find around. Um, gardening gloves, I go through 10 pairs of these a, <laughs> a season. So I always need these on my hands. And then just really simple snips. Um, and I prefer the ones that have a curved blade. These are kind of my favorite for getting in there. And I like the ones that automatically spring open and have a little, little loop to hold it shut. These, it's all I need. These dinner plate dahlias, they get so big that they aren't that great in bouquets but now that they're onto secondary flowers the flowers you know they're they're a little bit smaller so i can pick some of these these they don't keep as long so i don't like using too many um but some people like them so i'm, I'm gonna pick a handful today for the bouquets Look at all the dahlia carnage. What are you looking for in a dahlia? Looking for something that's just starting to open so it'll get the longest vase life. Uh, you know, like this, the flower's already dying, it's already finishing. This is actually uh, deadhead time. <laughs> We got a storm coming. Yep. 
pick these whites before they get browned with the water. And then maybe, maybe I'll take a break inside too. Or maybe it'll be a good, good time to go do some greenhouse work since it's been too hot to want to work on pruning tomatoes. These white lashes look amazing. I know, aren't those great? They're gonna, with the white and the purple, I'm gonna do like all white bouquets with Liatris and white snapdragons and cosmos. I think they're gonna be pretty. My favorite, those drapey beautiful things. My wig, my wig plant. What do you think? Would I look good with pink hair? Sure. A full bucket. This is my job. Progress. I've been harvesting for about an hour now and we actually have some stuff in here. So, yay. But lots and lots more. Now the rain's coming. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? We'll sure. see. If it rains, I'll stop harvesting and then I will wait and see how the flowers, how wet the flowers get so that I don't pick them and have them just soaking wet inside here picked. If uh, the rain gets on them outside and then it warms up again and they dry off, that would be better for harvesting than to harvest them when they're soaking wet. You know, so how has the harvest gone? Taking a break. What are you doing? Playing a video game. <laughs> <laughs> What's the goal of this game? Harvest all the flowers. It's raining lightly out here right now. Serena has been working so hard. Um, I have been very impressed with the amount of physical work that she does. So the thing that has been most impressive about Serena is that she never complains. She doesn't, she's not like, uh, oh, like, I wish we had a day off. Because basically, you know, we can't even really think about taking a day off till the, like, till the fall. I don't know. We're both in the same mindset where um, we have this, this goal, you know, we talk about a five-year goal and we're two years into it. But in those two years that we've been here, like there's there's no uh, complaining that this is too hard or that it's not working out exactly. You know, if, if there's a problem, we talk about the problem and we talk about what our options are for solutions. But um, I've just been amazed that, you know, she has all this motivation for for this farm and it, it, it's great, you know, like I think we, we push each other by both trying to put our everything into this. It's raining, so we decided to harvest carrots instead. <laughs> At least we're hoping the rain will stop or that it'll stay light and then we can get back to flowers. Um, because usually when it rains, it rains for you know, a few drops for half an hour and then the sun comes back out. I think that there is a bit of a lesson in the rain, at least, in the fact that you have to be adaptable with the farming. You know, you have to you have to work with what the weather throws at you. You can have all these plans for these beautiful flowers that you're gonna do and you know, then the rain comes and it it damages them or a frost comes and it kills them or bugs come and eat them. Um, so if you are not flexible, maybe you want to be a little bit careful about getting into farming because it loves to throw curveballs at you. You're forgetting the most common mistake, human error. Oh yeah, and human error. Like not getting up earlier before the rain and harvesting it even though the weather said it was going to rain today. Oh, a bunch of carrots. <laughs> it's actually raining really hard out right now, so I am taking a breather in the greenhouse 
Uh, I think maybe we'll put a pause on all the harvesting for a little bit, just until this uh, this rain stops. It's actually been going for a while now, and it might end up kind of making for a late night tomorrow as we try to scramble and get everything done tomorrow instead of today. But who knows? We can just harvest less of everything and kind of save a bit of time that way. And so that it's not like a four in the morning night for Serena. It's very rainy today. Too rainy. And I still don't have any flowers. I have flowers, but I don't have the mix that I need to be able to make bouquets. So, problematic. But uh, it's great weather for harvesting veggies. So maybe I'm gonna flip over to veggies instead of flowers and save flowers for tomorrow. How's, uh, how's the flower harvesting going? Oh, excellent. This is how many I've harvested. You can see them all in my hands. There it is again. <laughs> but the greenhouses got cleaned up because it's been too hot for me to come in these greenhouses without dying the last two weeks. So they were in desperate need and they were nice and dry. And the rain stopped. So maybe, maybe I'll be able to do some headlamp harvesting tonight and still get flowers done today. Look at how good these look. Oh, I was gonna pick one right here. Well, that's good. Okay, you do it all the time. Tell us about Barry's Crazy Cherry. Look how crazy they are. I I picked off of this last week. So, there is, I've already harvested tomatoes off of this. <laughs> Oh, None of our customers are excited, but I'm excited for eggplants. Yeah. Every time you don't sell eggplants, I'm happy. Because <laughs> <laughs> just because our customers don't want to eat them all, doesn't mean I won't. You gonna actually get some flowers harvested? Yep. It's starting to get dark, but I'm gonna start harvesting the zinnias now, and then I'll leave Leave some of the other stuff for tomorrow when hopefully the flowers are all dried off. But the zinnias, they've had a few hours, they've dried out a little bit, and uh, I have a headlamp, so lots of time still. It's still early. It is now the following day and the flowers have dried off and we're back to harvesting. There's probably some damage in my flowers, but it doesn't matter because I have like a million. So I don't need to pick them all anyways for the market. What I'm working on right now is sunflowers, which are one of our most profitable, profitable flowers. We do bunches of 10, you know, these are just random, a random uh, branching variety that I, or a mix. It's a, it's a mix of all different colors and, and looks. And so I throw together 10 of these, put some elastics on it and throw them in the bucket. And these, we sell lots of these. Last week we sold 35 bouquets. Um, and then we, we probably sold another, you know, another 10 um, at the house on, on Sunday. The, I've been sending 50 down to the market um, and ideally I'd like to sell 50, but the, we're just not quite getting there on, on the numbers. Um, if we're to the point that we can sell 50 at the farmer's market, then we're at the point that the flowers are profitable for us. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year, we start to 
start to gain some attention and gain some regular customers. Last week, we sold out of the sunflowers. I sent one bucket, so this week we're sending two buckets. See if, see if we can sell even more. I make these super full bunches. I do, I do 10 stems because then if, you know, they get some smashing or some of them start to, you know, some of them are further along than others, then the bunches, you know, stay, stay good for people. Some of them can drop their flowers while others, while others keep going. There, look at that. Beautiful, 10 bucks. Well, so every single harvesting vlog that we make is apparently gonna have the exact same storyline because we are the most unorganized people in the entire world and yet again, it's chaos, it's way too late and I still don't have anything done and that's where we're at and I still have to harvest all the veggies too. So, yeah, very, very classic Ian and Serena story today. And how much money have you made today? Uh, but I'm I'm raking in the dough that's distracting me from from uh, harvesting. I've made a hundred dollars so far. You which, did a wedding today. Oh yeah, and I did a wedding. <laughs> Not actually. I just sold some flowers to someone who wanted to do a wedding. But distractions. Pretty soon it'll be night, and then I can put on my headlamp, and then there will be no distractions. There's no distractions till the till the sun comes up, and then that's pretty distracting because I know I have to go to bed. Um, but let's let's keep going. Let's keep moving. Show you where I'm at so far, and for context, it's four o'clock right now. Um, if I stay up till the sun comes up, that's four a.m. So that means I have 12 hours to get everything done and everything takes forever. So that, that is, that's the crunch that I'm feeling. So I got my filler picked here. I got um, my cinnamon basil, my lemon basil, and then just a Genovese basil that I've been using. And I have most of my zinnias done. I've been out, I've picked through almost every one of the colors. I just have lime zinnias left yet. Here, I'll show you the rest of it. Like this cat, we got a got a big, healthy harvest. We're, he's a prize winner. He's gonna win the biggest pumpkin contest at the fair. You want to snap the guy? So I have the rest of my zinnias. I got my amaranths and my liatris stuff to kind of be something to build the bouquets around. I got my snapdragons, which. You know, I have some ideas of what I'm gonna be building when I come to do these bouquets. So I have a plan, I have almost all the ingredients, and now I just need to use my time well before I get in here and start putting the bouquets together. Let's go harvest that one last lime zinnia. So I've harvested, despite all these flowers that are still here, I have harvested these zinnias already. Um, I, I only need a bucket for what I'm gonna be making for the market, but I have so many, I'm like drowning in them, and I really do need to get them picked, but things were chaos, things are time sensitive, so that's not what we're doing today. I picked a bucket each of all these colors. Everything else that's left is, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna have to deadhead it at some point, but, lime it's like bee heaven right now i'm like walking through all these bees are flying away yes gotta have some of these lime ones i love these look how pretty those are they look so good when they're all mixed in with everything else nice neutral
time to strip the leaves. My rows are really narrow to work in because I'm ridiculous and I plant everything way too close. So I pick everything and then I bring it out here and I strip the leaves before putting it into the bucket where I have more space and I can hide in the shade. Even though harvest day can be like a long day, uh, it's still one of my favorite days of the week. When we get the kids to bed and it's like dark out, put on our headlamps, there's no more distractions, we get down to business. It's like summertime and the nights are gorgeous. We live in this beautiful place and we're doing this, this work that we really love and we got the music going. You know, it, it really isn't a tough thing for me, especially being a night owl, to stay up all night and, and do this. The hard part is the next morning when my alarm goes off at 4.30 is uh, waking up for that. That can be tough. What about you? What's Today? your complaint? No complaints here either. You know, I my only complaint is with myself when, you know, I'm like, I should have done more work on on Thursday, you know, which is what I'm currently saying. Even though it was rainy, I should have picked all the zinnias because the buckets of zinnias that I did pick were fine. I don't know that I'd say that harvest day is my favorite day because every day is my favorite day. It's all good? It's all good. Every day is good. We have one more thing to harvest. We gotta go get some white cosmos because I'm doing a white bouquet and then we're done. One and more, on to veggies. One more flower thing. Yeah, one more flower thing before I get on to everything that I have to harvest. What do you have to harvest for the veggies? Well, all I've harvested so far are carrots and beets. So I have to harvest everything we grow on the farm. <laughs> I hate harvesting Cosmos so much that I seriously considered not growing Cosmos this year because it's, it's like a hedge and I have to reach in, I have to do all this like delicate picking. It's a pain in the butt. And then it gets to this point, it's just dead stuff everywhere because I haven't deadheaded it. And so it drives me crazy. <laughs> but I still planted it. And I probably still will plant it again next year, but still drives me crazy. Hey, Mr. B, get out of there. The bees, they're everywhere. I know. He's like absolutely refusing. He's like, no! <laughs> He's just being mad at me, buzzing. Okay, fine. He can go in the bucket to fly away at his leisure. This is the fantasy of flower farming. You're just laying in petals, enjoying the day. But uh, no, the reality is you're uh, hot and dirty and sweaty and you're actually laying in rotten apricots. <laughs> So the first thing I do is I grab whatever it is I'm gonna be working for with the recipe and I get it all cleaned up, make sure the stems are clean. So for this, I'm gonna do an amaranth, I'm gonna do yellow snapdragons, then I'm gonna do some zinnias and basil. That's gonna be my recipe. So I'm gonna get it all laid out on the table. Well, this video was supposed to be a simple flower harvest video and it keeps uh, just falling apart because the rain hasn't stopped. It's been uh, rainy all tonight and it was rainy all last night. I am cleaning up some onions right now. Um, we've got a whole bunch of them. Serena harvested out of bed today. And uh, this is how we bring them to the market right now. I think it looks pretty snazzy with the... Hold one up. The green's still... Ooh, yeah. fancy. They, they haven't quite flopped over in the field yet so you know we're leaving them like that while we sell them 
And they've actually been selling pretty good because they look so cool. I have the table all laid out in assembly line. Uh, this is kind of the idea of how to do flowers, get everything prepped, and then you just throw it together really quick. Um, and I'm gonna show you the Serena Special. This is the, it's summer on the farm. This is my favorite bouquet. This is the, wow, Serena, your bouquets are so unique. Okay, so what I do is I start with an amaranth, and then I grab three snapdragons, and then, well, actually, I'm this time I'm using four because my snapdragons are a little sad looking. And then I'm gonna do eight zinnias. So I'm grabbing two of each of these colors that I have laid out here. Just throw it in there. And then I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of greenery, which I apparently didn't shorten enough. And there you go. Look at that, worth the money right off the bat. 10 bucks, Serena Special. This is what a lot of my bouquets end up being. Uh, something weird and spiky, something else weird and spiky in the multiple of three. A uh, handful of zinnias and then basil for my filler. It smells good with the basil. And then I trim the ends even, and I pop my elastic on to keep it together, and into the bucket. Our newest thing that we're doing is that I'm making entire buckets that are exactly the same for the market. So then Ian only needs to put out um, one to display, but we have more for when that one sells, and then he, he you know, then he only has eight different types of bouquets to display rather than when we send 50 him having uh, 50 all different bouquets which makes it very hard to pick to pick which specific one you should buy so it makes everyone life easier in theory there you go two down 50 more to go and that's why we stay up all night I'm so used to making bouquets in this outbuilding where I just throw everything on the ground that the other day I had some flowers inside my house and there was greenery on them that I needed to strip and I, without thinking about it, was just stripping it onto the floor of my kitchen and I was like, what am I doing? I got a whole bucket, a whole bucket of Leatris. Okay, whole bucket of Leatris. Look at that. Oh, makes me happy. I like it. Okay. I'll also, now that you've learned how to make the Serena special, teach you how to make another bouquet they'll never teach you in, uh, in florist school. But what I do is I take Leatris, I take three, and I stagger them. So I get this weird spike. And then I grab random zinnias and I make a little cone around them. It's very technical, this one. Let's see. How many? That is eight. We'll throw one more in there. Throw one there. All right, there you go. Another Serena bouquet. That one doesn't have any filler flowers, so it actually goes good. Yeah. <clears throat> no filler, only flower. And they look great when there's a whole bunch of them in the bucket all together. But nice and vertical, very punchy, very fun. I like it. We had started to do a little bit better on harvest days, where our goal is to not to be up till four in the morning. 
scrambling on harvest day. That is the opposite of what we would like to be doing. We'd like to be more organized and know, know that things are getting done on a better schedule. Um, but, you know, the, the weather was fighting us. We could have fought back. We didn't. <laughs> you know, hindsight. Hindsight is 2020. In hindsight, I would have done more yesterday. Um, and now I will suffer by staying up very late and doing all this. But I don't know. Like I think we're gonna get it all I, put together. I know it'll all get done. The bouquets will look amazing because they always look amazing, even when I just start with garbage. Uh, go check that video out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess the the moral of the story is this is this chaos is more what flower farming looks like than all those beautiful flower farming uh, pictures on Instagram, right? You know, reality versus. The dream. The dream. A the dream bit. is is petals raining down on you. <laughs> and or no, the dream. And no, the dream is like going and like picking an armful and like you know having this beautiful armful of flowers and the rows are like five feet apart and it's clover so it's all cool and comfortable. And then you're like, oh, with this, oh, half an hour of going and picking flowers, now I'm gonna make a thousand dollars worth of bouquets. Not, not, not anywhere. And especially not here. It is now very late. It's like three in the morning, but I'm done. All the flowers, woo. And I got all the veggies picked. And so now I'm gonna go to bed very quietly and try not to wake Ian up because he has to get up in an hour. It's now Saturday morning, it's like I don't know, 5, 20 or so. I've been up for about an hour. Uh, I think Serena was up till, I don't know, not too long before my alarm went off at uh, 10 after four. <clears throat> she was looking pretty tired, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And my truck is so full right now. When I saw all the flowers that she made, I was like, these look amazing, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit them all. Check out how packed things are in here. And see, that's just a wall of stuff. Um, the back seats are basically the only place where we can keep the flowers because they're the only enclosed space. And it's not exactly perfectly flat back there. So I do have problems with stuff falling over. You can see more flowers up front. More flowers back there. But I did it. All that I had to do is put all of the sunflowers back here, which shouldn't be too bad. There's not a lot of wind kind of like right behind the cab. So that's my, that's my little, you know, concession. I'm sure it'll be fine. In the meantime, I did it. I packed the truck. Serena did it. She got everything harvested. She made all the flowers. Um, you know, we, we do sometimes get a little bit behind on harvest day, but, uh, we always, we always push through and, uh, and make it and then we just crash out on, uh, on Sunday, Monday and run out of energy completely. That's our plan. Just run ourselves till uh, we can't go anymore. And then we're like, perfect. That's the perfect amount of effort. So off I go to the market.
It's Tuesday morning now, and I'm about to go off to the food bank with all the flowers and the food we didn't sell this week. Uh, the market went, uh, eh. We sold like 750 bucks. The markets definitely aren't like what they were before all the shutdowns. It is similar to what we've been selling. We were hoping to sell more because the stand looks so good and we've got all this summer stuff, but uh, there are some issues with the market in this you know, new reality. And, uh, and this is just what it is for now. So hopefully in another future year, we can get to where we want to with the sales, but probably for the rest of this year, we'll just be selling in that kind of 750 to $900 range every week. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and we'll check you out next time.